Welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. We're glad to have you this morning. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we invite you to drop your name and email address into the request prayer. Hit that button. A clergy member uh, attends to that function and it will enable us to follow up with you later. We're glad you're here. Um, we continue um, our experimentation at St. Stephen's in this COVID tide. Uh, and so this morning, we're expanding our morning prayer to include the gospel reading, um, and you'll see that as it comes along. There's several announcements that I want uh, to share with you. First of all, we're expanding our virtual offerings to include children's formation. Um, so on the Facebook page of the church, on our website, and in our email, our e-star, you'll find a link to children's worship. Uh, Hannah Pomersheim, our curate, has been leading that uh, effort, and that'll be a short way to engage your children in faith and song and prayer. We're also, in terms of worship, um, getting better with our equipment, so we're going to invite you to bear with us as we try on our new camera, our new microphones, and get the experience of um, sharing out the in-person worship uh, in a more smooth format. Throughout COVID tide, we've been learning new things. Uh, and as we're making the transition back in person, uh, we know that it will take us a while to get um, the mechanisms down. So please be patient. Also know that you can sign up through the um, website. There's a link to come to in-person worship. We're limiting that to 10 people per Sunday. Uh, and we invite you to register. You can also call the church to get on that Sign Up Genius so we know you're coming. We look forward to seeing you in person. I have a couple of big announcements that I want to share with you this morning. One is that St. Stephen's School and Church has uh, contracted with Kirksey Architects to do the design work for our renovation and new construction. Kirksey will begin their work with us this coming week, and on October 13th, we'll be hosting a Zoom um, visioning session with representatives from the school and the church. You'll be hearing more about uh, what, how the plans are unfolding. Uh, as you get the stewardship materials, uh, we'll be having an update on our progress, but this is a major step forward, and you'll be getting updates on the who and what soon. Also, St. Stephen's has received a strategic mission grant from the Diocese of Texas. This is going to enable us to expand our footprint in the virtual world uh, as we launch a podcast in Spanish language as well as in English, looking at the intersections of spirituality, faith, and the intersections of uh, race and sexual identity and gender identity. Uh, you'll be uh, hearing more about this, and you'll be approached to help us with uh, the production of our podcast uh, as we seek to be connecting um, on the horizon of faith and action. Finally, if you haven't filled out your 2020 census uh, for the government, please do. The census helps us not only get um, financial resources for our local community. It also serves as a tool to apportion our political representation as a city and state. They're also uh, needing to um, get a more accurate count. Right now, um, Houston has received 61% of our population being counted and their goal was to get at least 72%. So we'll be texting out a link for you to fill out your census and you can forward that link to others uh, who may not have filled it out. It's an important civic duty and an opportunity to be counted. Now, still your heart and mind as we prepare for worship. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. For today is number 105, verses 1 through 6 and 37 through 45. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, the wonders, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth, O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Led out his people with silver and gold. All their tribes, there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked and quails appeared. He satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and the water flowed so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' to toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you sh shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. From Philippians. To me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. 
Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I might share abundantly in your boasting in Jesus Christ when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation, and this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again, about noon, and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when they first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many of us have had spiritual high points in our lives times when we are sure that God is with us, working to sustain us. For some, it might come on a spiritual retreat, or when you travel to a particular place, maybe a church or a beautiful mountain, where you feel God's presence with you. For some of us, we feel closest to God in a moment of crisis, when we are sure that God is with us. These moments of certainty about God's presence are extraordinary, but they are fleeting gifts. How quickly they pass. So what are we to do with the rest of our lives? What about the ordinary? Today we see how the ancient Israelites faced the same issue. For the last few weeks, as we've been going through the book of Exodus, We have heard about how God delivered the Israelites from Egypt in the most dramatic of ways, plagues, a last minute rescue, an escape through the Red Sea. And yet, already, just a little bit later, they are forgetting, worrying, murmuring, grumbling. The ordinary day-to-day life of freedom doesn't feel how they imagined. They are in the wilderness. And in this wilderness space, all those other daily concerns are creeping back in. Our passage today opens with their complaints. 
If we were only still in Egypt, they say, at least there we could have eaten well. Those absurd complaints can easily color how we see this passage. I mean, it helps us see how we as human beings are complainers. We see ourselves in the Israelites, even as we might roll our eyes at them. But apart from their kvetching, what is interesting is what we don't hear, reproach. In response to their grumbling, there is no reproach from God or even a hint of finger wagging. There is something much more like grace. God sees that the root of their faith problem, their complaining to God, is actually a food problem. It's not a faith crisis, but a food crisis. They are longing for their former bondage because of their deep hunger. And so God responds to that underlying issue, not through scolding, but by providing them sustenance. God meets their needs by raining down bread from heaven. This too would be a nice place in this passage to stop reading and derive a lesson of our own, the miracle God provides from heaven. But the story continues, and it is stranger and more beautiful than we may remember. After God hears the people's complaints, Moses and Aaron relay the message of God's provision to the people. And that evening, the quail come to the camp so the people may eat meat. And in the morning, they see this white, flaky substance. And they ask Moses, what is this? As an aside, what is this is actually manna in Hebrew. The name of manna is, what is this? A question. Bread, Moses tells them. And as the chapters continue, the Israelites learn how to use this substance and how to gather it, and how to gather only enough for what they need for that day, rather than hoarding it. The manna and the quail sound miraculous to us, and they do come in an extraordinary manner at exactly the right moment. But they are also earthy and ordinary. The quail migratory pattern happens every year across the Mediterranean. The stuff of manna, that white flaky substance that is described in Exodus, is still gathered and baked on the Sinai Peninsula today. Stop reading here and another lesson emerges. Sustenance isn't always sexy. If we are looking for something raining down from heaven, what else will we miss? Barbara Brown Taylor confronts this question in her book, Bread from Heaven. She writes, if your manna has to drop straight out of heaven, looking like a perfect loaf of butter crusted bread, then chances are, you are going to be hungry a lot. When you do not get the miracle you are praying for, you are going to think that God is ignoring you or punishing you, or worse yet, that God is not there. You may start complaining to heaven. And meanwhile, you miss a lot of other things that God is doing for you because they're too ordinary or too transitory, like manna. If, on the other hand, you are willing to look at everything that comes to you as coming to you from God, then there will be no end to manna in your life. A can of beans will be manna. Grits will be manna. When you go to bed hungry and wake up to a fine flaky substance on the ground, you will say, what is this? And when someone says, it is the bread that the Lord your God has given you to eat, you will believe it, and you will say, thanks be to God. Because it is not the what it is that counts, but who sent it. End quote. As Barbara Brown Taylor says, God shows up in our lives in ordinary ways all the time. And that is made extraordinary, not because of the way God shows up, but because it is God who is showing up in our lives. 
Barbara Brown Taylor says, God is made known to us in the simple things that sustain our lives. Some bread, some love, some breath, some wine. All these absolutely essential things that are here today and gone tomorrow. The good news is that God is with us in the transitory, in the everyday, in our kitchens and on our phone calls, in all the mundane moments of our lives. It might not seem miraculous to us, but it is still extraordinary because of who God is. Jesus taught us to pray, give us our daily bread. Not give us a miracle, but give us our manna. God is present and completely bound up with the ordinary in our lives. God takes water, wine, and wheat. And what is miraculous is that God takes these most mundane of things and makes them sacraments. This is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we're placed among things that are passing away, 
to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit 
the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>